immune to conference participants press the walk off with your Sweeter as the years go by. Sweeter as the years go by. Richer, fuller, deeper. Jesus' love is sweeter. Sweeter as the years go by. Sweeter as the years go by. Sweeter as the years go by. Richer, fuller, deeper, Jesus' love is sweeter, sweeter as the years go by, sweeter as the years go by, sweeter as the years go by. Richer, fuller, deeper, Jesus' love is sweeter, sweeter as the years go by. Oh, sweeter as the years go by, sweeter as the years go by, richer, fuller, deeper, Jesus' love is sweeter, sweeter as the years go by. Well, God bless you. Good morning. Good morning, Missionary Johnson. Good morning, Sister Bailey. Good morning, Sister Sessions. God bless you, Elder and Sister Adams. Good morning, Bailey. God bless you, my friend. Good morning, Sister Butler. God bless you. And Brother Butler, good morning. God bless you, Brother Stokes, Sister Stokes, and the Stokes family. Good morning, Sister Riley. Good morning, Angela. Good morning, Yolanda. Good morning, Sister Bailey. Good morning, Mother Pride. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Walker. God bless you. Good morning, Mother Wilkins. God bless you and Deacon Wilkins. Good morning, Sister Janice. Good morning, Bishop Designate All Day and Lady All Day. God bless you both. Good morning, Thomasina. Good morning, Miriam. Good morning, Alicia. Good morning, Sister Dawes. God bless you and Minister Dawes. Good morning, Sister Joyner. Good morning, Sister Davis. God bless you and Deacon Davis. Good morning, Sister Williford. God bless you and Pastor Williford. Praise the Lord, Sister Murphy Jackson. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Kinlock. Good morning, Sister Bailey. Good morning, Sister Mamie. God bless you, Sister Nixon. Good morning, Bishop and Mother Joseph. God bless you both. Good morning, Burnett. God bless you, Mother Morris. God bless you, Mother Meadows. Praise the Lord, Sister Chloe. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Kimberly. God bless you. Duchess, good morning praying for you. Good morning, Sister Edmund. God bless you, Sister Stewart. Praise the Lord, Deacon Grant. God bless you, Sister Saunders. Praise the Lord, Tiana. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Hedrick. Good morning, Deacon and Mother Wilson. Good morning, Sister Wiggins and Brother Wiggins. God bless you both. Good morning, Sister Malloy. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Walker. God bless you. Good morning, Gail. Good morning. Good morning, Katrina. God bless you. Good morning, Elder and Sister Bailey, God bless you both. Good morning. Praise the Lord. God bless you, Deacon Briggs. Good morning, Deacon Davis. God bless you and Mother Barbara. Praise the Lord. Well, God, good morning and praise the Lord, everybody. And welcome to the morning prayer with Pastor Reginald Davis. And as always, it's an honor, a privilege, and a pleasure to be able to spend a few moments with you with a biblical meditation and in prayer. For more things have been wrought by prayer than the world will ever know. Our lives are so enriched. Our lives are so strengthened. Our lives are edified through the function of prayer, praying and believing God and watching God work on our behalf. And yes, we see Every day, every day, we see the manifestation of the power of God through prayer. People simply trusting, believing, and turning to God for what they need and God doing what God is able to do. So I'm just grateful today that I know the power of prayer. I'm grateful today because practically every day I receive praise reports of people who have prayed and watched the Lord do things. Family members coming to Christ, people being healed people leaving hospitals, people coming through surgeries, God just doing what God does. So we know prayer works. We know prayer works. We know prayer 
creates the power of God in our lives so that things can happen, hallelujah, for us. As always, if you have a prayer request, please place it into the chat. If you're on Facebook, you can add it right now to the chat or you can inbox Reginald Davis or you can inbox Refuge Temple Church. If you're on Instagram, you can do the same thing. You can simply add it to the chat or you can um, direct message Pastor R. JD, Pastor RJD. And for those who are on the conference call and those who may be watching by YouTube, and anybody can do this, you can text in your prayer request to 336 567 5358. Again, that number is 336 567 5358. Text in those prayer requests and let's believe God together for what. We know God is indeed able to do. I want to direct your attention back to the second chapter of the book of 1 John. 1 John chapter number 2. 1 John chapter number 2. And I want to read verses 7 through 9. Verses 7 through 9. The Bible says, brethren, I write no new commandment unto you, but an old commandment, which ye had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which ye have heard from the beginning. Again, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing is true in him and in you, because the darkness is past and the true light now shineth. He that saith he is in the light and hate of his brother is in darkness even until now. I want to talk about the old and new commandment, and it'll make sense in a moment, the old and new commandment. One of the things that John, I think, spends a lot of time on, this is a major theme in this epistle, is the concept of love and the necessity of love. It is not an option. It is not just offered to those people who deem themselves to be affectionate or kind or considerate, but love is a divine expectation. It is a divine expectation that God has for all of humanity but especially for those that claim to know him. Love, Jesus deals with it. Um, the apostles deal with it. It is a part of the canon of scripture that love is an expectation for all those that will follow and walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. In fact, you really are not a Christian. You really are not a believer unless you have been exposed to and accepted God's love for your own salvation. And then loving God because he loved you. And then finally demonstrating that love to all of humanity. That is a biblical expectation. It is, it, it, to, in my mind, as I read the scripture, it is as important as repentance, as water baptism, as the infilling of the Holy Ghost, because love is a requirement by God. It is a requirement. It is something that Jesus Christ stipulated over and over again that we should love and that that love should be manifested as often and as intense as we can bring it. We should be bringing love. We should be sharing love. We should be manifesting love. Now, um, John does a play on words between the old and the new commandment. The old and the new commandment. He calls it old and he also calls it new. He calls it new because it is refreshing and it is um, fresh in quality. And it is something that is in replacement of that which is worn out. He calls it old because it is timeless. 
It's a word play here. Um, he doesn't state what the command is per se, but the command is love. It is, it, he said, he, what he's saying is that I'm not bringing you something that you have not heard. That's what he's trying to say in verse seven, that I write no new commandment to you. I'm not bringing you something that you haven't heard, that you haven't known about, that you haven't been exposed to. I'm not bringing you any new information. This is a reiteration of what Jesus Christ taught. Jesus Christ taught love as a requirement. Jesus said, a, a commandment I give unto you that you should love one another. And when Jesus expressed it at the it, during his earthly ministry, it perhaps was new because there was so much vengeance and so much negativity attached to the law through the Pharisees, through the scribes, through the religious leaders, that this notion of love was to some a new concept. But John is saying it's not a new commandment because Jesus gave it to you. Jesus gave it to the disciples. Jesus gave it to the church. And John's chronologically, some 60 years earlier, Jesus was preaching and teaching about love. So this is not a new concept. He said, it's an old commandment, which you had from the beginning, from the beginning of the faith. You have been told about love. You were told about God's love for you. You were told about your love to God. You were told about your love for one another. It is not a new concept. I know when we hear about love, some people act like it's a new concept based upon their behavior, based upon their attitudes, based upon how they do and what they do. They almost act like love is a new thing, but love is not a new thing in the sense that it's something fresh off the horizon. It has always been an expectation from the beginning. We have always been expected to love. Even in the Old Testament, they were told to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy mind, all thy soul, all thy strength. That commandment of love, God gave it to Israel that they should love him. And when they asked Jesus about the greatest commandments, Jesus gave that commandment as being one of the two. They said, what are the greatest commandments? He said, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy strength, and with all thy might. And then he said, the second commandment is like unto the first, that thou should love thy neighbor as thyself. And he said, there are no other commandments greater than these, that you could put all of um, our faith, all of our doctrine, all of our belief system into two simple things, love God and love people. Let me say that again, love God and love people. If you love God, you will, not, you will honor his word. You won't betray his commandments. You will live by the word of God if you love God. And if you love people, you won't rob them, steal from them, lie on them, um, cheat them, or do anything against them because love is motivating the interaction and love is motivating the behavior. So he's saying that this is not, it might be, it's a refreshing thought, but it's not a new commandment. It's been with us from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which you have heard from the beginning. You have heard from the beginning that we should love God and we should love people. We have heard from the beginning that love is dominates and dictates our actions, our thoughts, our behaviors. And if it's not motivated by love, then guess what? God is not pleased. If it's not motivated by love, God is not pleased. Then he says, again, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing is true in him and in you. In other words, this new refreshing commandment, a reminder, a refreshing of what you should know, what you need to know, what you should do. It is a part of our standard and is energized by the Holy Ghost. What makes the commandment of love new was that Jesus personified love. Jesus personified love. If you're looking for the example of love, if you're looking for the example of care and compassion and forgiveness and commitment, all of that is in Jesus Christ. He is the personification of love. And yes, he raised love to a higher standard for the church because in the Old Testament, 
You, they were just, they basically told you to love your friends and hate your enemies. But that's not the New Testament commandment that we should love friends and hate enemies. The New Testament commandment is that we should love our enemies. That's what the Bible says that we should love our enemies, that we should bless them that curse us, that we should pray for them that despitefully use us. So, Jesus Christ has raised a standard of love beyond what the Old Testament taught and what the scribes and Pharisees shared, that we ought to love everybody, even those people who are challenging. And yes, you have people in your life, you have people that you deal with daily, you have people that may be members of your family, members of your church, that for whatever reason, loving them is challenging. But the Bible still commands that we love them, that we love them. And so the readers of John's epistle are being commanded to love the same love that they had when they first heard the gospel. All right, not a love, but a beginning of your Christian walk. This is the love that you've known about from the beginning of your walk with Christ. We told you when you first came in the church that Jesus Christ expects his people to love. We told you when you first were baptized, when you first received the power of the Holy Ghost, that Jesus expects you to love. And so he says, I'm writing to remind you. I'm writing to encourage you. I'm writing to exhort you that you love which thing is true in him and in you. This new commandment, you've seen it in Christ and it's in your life. And because the darkness is past and the true light now shineth. In other words, if you have truly come out of darkness into the marvelous light, love should be a part of your life. Love should be a part of your lifestyle. Love should be a part of your behavior. Love should be a part of what you do and how you do. There are no exceptions. Let me say that again. There are no exceptions. There are there, there are no people that can get by and say, you know what? I'm just not a loving person. I'm a good Christian. I, I, I'm just, I, I read the Bible. I pray, but I'm just not a loving person. My friend, if you're going to be a Christian, if you're going to be identified with Jesus Christ, Christ, if Christ is your savior, then you are respected. You are required by the word and by the Holy Ghost that is in you to show love and to demonstrate love and not just to demonstrate love because you happen to feel affection for somebody, but to demonstrate love even when that person is not lovable. Even if that person is not behaving as they should, it does not release you from your requirement to love. It's an expectation, my friend. It's an expectation. And that's why he says this in verse 9. He says, he that saith he is in the light and hateth his brother is in darkness even until now. You can make the claim. That you're walking with Jesus. You can make the claim that you're living for God. You can make the claim that you're trying your best to please God. You can make the claim that you're striving to enter in. But if you aren't operating in love, the Bible says, John writes, you are in darkness even now. If love is a problem, if forgiveness is an issue, if really demonstrating your love for people, and I'm going to say this because I think this is one of our critical mistakes, that we think love means I have to feel warmly towards them because they have behaved warmly towards me. And that's not love. Love is a choice. Let me say that again. Love is a choice. If love to you is only an emotion, you are loving out of your flesh. Let me say it again. If love to you is only an emotion, you are loving out of your flesh. To love like Christ, you have to love as an act of choice. It is not necessarily what I feel, but is what I know that I'm, I'm supposed to do because I've been given the love of God. And I'm a recipient of God's love. And I'm a recipient of the mercy of, the, of Jesus Christ. And because I have received the love, I have the obligation to give the love. And it is love, the love of choice. Agape love is the love of choice. It means I could have walked away. 
I could have turned away, but yet I, I'm loving because Jesus could have turned from all of us. He could have abandoned all of us in our sin, but he chose to love us even to the point of sacrifice at Calvary, even to the point of sacrifice, loving people that rejected him that did not receive him, that ignored him, that ridiculed him, whatever you want to say, that's what we did to Jesus. Most of us did not come the first time we heard the gospel. We didn't want it. We didn't think we needed it. We thought we wanted to do something else, but the Lord kept loving us until he loved us in to this salvation. And that's the love he's given to us through the Holy Spirit. If you have the Holy Spirit, you've been given the capacity to love because you you know what the Bible says? The fruit or the offspring or the growth of the spirit. The first thing it mentions is love. And if I'm filled with the Holy Spirit, if I'm born again, I have in me the capacity to love. It's not in my emotions. The love is in my spirit. Oh, shatama. It's not in my emotions. It's not in my feelings. The love is in my spirit. And the love of God empowers me to share that love with somebody else. Oh God, it's an old commandment because we should have been doing it all along, but it's a new commandment because it's refreshing and it's changing the lives of people. Imagine what would happen in your life if you simply loved. Oh my God, if you simply loved, simply shared that love, simply expressed that love, simply offered that love that Jesus Christ has given to you, you pass it on to the people in your life. I'm not done. We're going to continue this all through this, this second chapter because John wants us to know and the Lord wants us to know that love is his expectation for every believer. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. My dear Jesus, I love you. I honor you. I thank you for another day. I thank you. I adore you because of your grace and your mercy and Lord, your steadfast love. Jesus, you loved us. When no one else cared, you loved us. When we didn't even know enough to love ourselves, you continued to love us. And God, we are so grateful for that love. We're so grateful that through your presence, through your life, through your example, and through your spirit, you are teaching us how to love. You are teaching us how to manifest your love in our lives. And Lord, we're so thankful today. I thank you for waking up this morning. I thank you for being in my right mind. I thank you for being able, oh God, to join my brothers and sisters from all over the world. Thank you, God, for their love. And thank you, God, for their faith. And thank you, God, for their commitment and their faithfulness to, my God, this time of prayer. I'm so grateful, Lord, oh God, that you've brought us together. And we have not come together for naught, but right now your presence is filling the virtual prayer room. Your glory, your honor, your adoration, my God, as we worship, we are receiving the benefit of your presence. And not only are we receiving your presence, but God, you are here to answer prayer. You are here to answer petitions. You are here to grant requests, God. And so we thank you for every request because they are miracles right now in the making, right? Right now, oh God, right now you're manifesting your presence upon somebody. And we thank you, God, right now for every name that's on the prayer list, every name in the prayer book, every name that's been sent by text or messenger or email. God, we're praying right now that you would grant the request of your sons and daughters. God, because you've promised, oh God, to do so many things for us. God, we're praying now that you would remember. We're praying today, God, hallelujah, for Dr. Hayes. Hey, would 
and his family. We're praying for Gene Harrell Long. We're praying for Caden and Carson. We're praying for the Bogues family, the Staten family. We're praying for the Rogers family, the Purvis family. We're praying, my God, for Margaret Speller. We're praying for Nikki and Serenity. We're praying for Kimberly Crawford today. We're praying for Edna Spratley and Angie Callahan. We're praying for Keith Perry today, for Crystal Lewis today, Jasmine Lewis. We're praying for Brandon Hinton today, for Winnie Diggs, oh God, for Jelani Francois. God, we're lifting up today the Glory Chapel Baptist Church. We're praying for Pastor Walter Atkins. We're praying for Faith Refuge this morning in Harrisburg. We're praying for Greater Refuge Temple in New York City. We're praying for Greater Refuge Temple in Jacksonville, Florida, and Lakeland, Florida. We're praying for Refuge Temple of Columbia today. We're praying, my God, for Bishop Charles Wright, oh God, and Mother Faye Wright. We're praying today, God, for Bishop William Wilkins, oh God, and Sister Sarah Wilkins. We're praying today, God, for Pastor Pastor All Day and Lady All Day. We're praying, my God, for every minister, every pastor today. We're lifting up Mother Lily Gatlin this morning, the Bryant family, the Fane family. We're praying for Chad and Stephanie and Crystal. We're praying for Sheila Scott. We're praying for the Scott family, the Brown family, the Grant family. Oh God, we're praying for the children, oh God, and the grandchildren that you might save. Lord, we're lifting up everybody today that is unsaved, everybody that's outside of the ark of safety, our loved ones, our friends, our relatives, those even those strangers that we have yet to meet that need to be saved. We're praying, my God, that we would be able to show the love of Christ and that love would be manifested in such a way that it draws people, my God, unto you. It draws the man, the woman, the boy and girl into fellowship, God, and we're praying for you to save. We're praying, my God, for the Hadley family, the Welch family, the Robinson family, the Chandler family. Every name that's on the prayer list, every name in the prayer book, every name in messenger or text or email. And Lord, we're even offering up the unspoken request, things that we have not articulated, but yet we believe you, God, that you are able to do and to move and to act. So God, have your way right now. We're praying today for the sick everywhere, everywhere, God, somebody's recovering, everywhere, somebody's Somebody's battling a sickness, but we believe you now, my God, that you are able to heal. We pray for Belinda Van Ross Poole today. We pray for Ashonda's daughter. We pray for Deacon Chris Harrison today. We lift up Deacon Perry Adams today. We lift up Elder Robert Toll this morning. We pray for Reverend James Crozier. God, that you would touch and heal now. We pray, my God, for Mother Morris's great grandchildren. God, that you would heal as only you can. We pray for Elijah. We pray for Lita. Ingram today. Everybody that's suffering sickness, God, we hold them up to you now. We lift up Bishop Alfonso Brooks, Mother Shirley Clark today, Mother Evangeline Jenkins. We pray, my God, for Lady Andrea Maxwell, Bishop David Maxwell. God, we're praying for Bishop Hallelujah Mac Vincent, Bishop Gregory Wilder, Bishop, my God, Hallelujah, Bishop Holly Irving Taylor, Apostle Leroy Joseph, Mother Carol Coleman. God, we lift up these souls knowing that you're able to heal. Pastor William Winston today. God, let your healing virtue flow. We pray today for Brother Wiggins. Oh God, that you would continue the healing process. We pray my God right now. Hallelujah for Brother and Mother Sherrod. Deacon and Mother Garland today. God, we're lifting them up before you. God, we're praying today for Dr. and Sister Haywood and Dr. Haywood's mother. We're praying today, God, that you would remember my God, Mother Jill, Mother Pride. Oh God, remember Mother Chambers, Mother Carter, Mother Moorhead today. Remember Lady Staten. Remember Margie right Right now, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, everybody that's recovering, remember Pastor Carr and Minister Carr, remember Elder Tyson and Elder Smith today, God, remember Mother Foster, Henry J, Brother Cliff, my God, stretch out your hand, oh God, to Mother Tanaj, Mother Holman, Missionary Simmons today, my God, remember them in a special way, remember my God, hallelujah, Cynthia, Catherine, and Duchess, Lord, give Duchess strength today, Lord, touch her body, raise her up, Lord, do what you need to do, God, but Lord, give her the healing virtue that only you can provide. God, I'm praying today that you remember, oh God, Marlette and Dennis today, Maurice today, God, remember my God, hallelujah, Tony, remember Kimberly and Chris, Lord, everybody everywhere that is sick, Lord, walk into every hospital, oh God, the cancer ward, the COVID ward, the ICU unit, the dialysis unit, God, and bring healing, walk into, oh God, nursing homes and rehab centers, oh God, walk even into hospice, God, 
because you are the healer of the body, the soul, and the mind. God, I'm praying today that you remember everybody on this line, anybody suffering in their body. My God, release healing virtue now in the name of Jesus. Touch joints and bodies. Touch arms and legs. My God, touch eyes and ears. God, touch your hashanama. Oh God, hearts and livers and lungs. And God, bring healing now in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you. Because I feel your healing virtue. So move upon the people now and bring your healing. God, I'm praying today for everybody that's grieving everywhere. God, I lift up Bishop Michael Fields and I lift up Shekinah and the Fields Green family. God, I'm praying today for Mother Ida Harrell and the Harrell family. I'm praying, my God, for Mother Jacqueline Grant and the Grant family. I'm praying for the McClennan family today. God, I'm praying today for grieving people everywhere. God, that you remember them, that you touch them, God. Grief is so heavy. Oh, God, it's so traumatic. Oh, God, because we feel the loss of the person. But, Lord, you remain the man of sorrow who is acquainted with our grief. And so we pray for your grace to be upon grieving people everywhere. Remember the Hargroves today. Remember, my God, the Kramers today. Remember church families that are grieving losses right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we're praying today for the Davis family. We're praying for Cynthia Bayesden. We're praying for the Schaffner and Small families. We're praying for Pastor Chance and the Moore family and the Olive Branch family, God. We're praying for the Brewster family. We're praying for Melissa Hart and the Evans family, God. We're praying for the Harris, oh God, and Mangrum family. We're praying for Mother Walker's family today. We're praying for Mimi. We're praying for Brother and Sister Evans and the Clark family. God, everybody that's grieving everywhere, we're praying your grace to be upon them, that you would cover and protect them. Oh God, we're praying for the Bynums, the Taylors, the Lloyds, the Carters. We're praying for the Giles family. We're praying, my God, for the Moyers, for the Meadows family, the Perkins family, for the Dockeries, for the White family. God, we're lifting up grieving people everywhere. Remember Anita and the Brian Hopkins family. Remember Margie and the McLean, Melvin and Street families. God, remember, my God, the Ransom family, God, in their hour of grief now. Remember, my God, hallelujah, lift up, oh God, Brenda and the Allen McNeely family. God, I'm praying today for Shauna Monique and the Gary Porter family. God, I'm praying today for the Allen Williams family, Grace to Trell and Ryan. I'm praying today for the Clark family, strength to Tommy and Michelle. Everybody that's grieving losses everywhere, I pray your grace to cover, your grace to strengthen. Oh God, remember the Mays, the Dunlaps, the Purdy's, the Sneeds, the Washington Fields family. Remember the Winninghams today. Remember my God, the Bankses, the Middletons, the Taylors. God, we pray your grace to be upon, oh God, the Felix family, the Zapata family, the Maddox, the Boodrums, the Gleans, the Arthurs, the Matherins, God, the Briggs family, God, the Phillips family, the Josephs, everybody, everywhere. God that is grieving. God, I'm praying today for the Davises. I'm praying for the Allens, the Hayses, the Moors, the Harbisons. I'm praying for the Austins, the Adams family. God, everybody, the Allens, everybody that's grieving. God, grant them grace and strength now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ to every grieving widow, widower, child, parent, sibling, every loved one. God, just grant your grace in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm praying for the church today, the entire body of Christ, every apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher, every bishop and elder, every first lady, every pastor's child, every mother and missionary, minister and deacon, every young person, my God in the church, every musician, singer, and psalmist, Lord, the entire church, oh God, let us embrace oh this new commandment, let us love, let us love, let us love in the name of Jesus, let us love God, let us love you, let us love one another, let us love the sinner. God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray for first responders, essential workers, firemen, policemen, EMTs. I pray, my God, for everybody that works in a school and every student that goes to a school. I pray for everybody, God. Oh, hallelujah. I pray, my God, that you would strengthen everybody. Lord, as these numbers go up and down, protect those that are uninfected. Heal those that have been infected. Oh, God, grant your grace of healing everywhere. Remember Bishop D today. In the name of Jesus Christ, God, strengthen and deliver and do what only you are able to do. God, as you're healing, oh, God, bodies and hearts and minds. God, heal this sick land. This world is so troubled. This world is in so much turmoil. But, Lord, 
you are the bomb in Gilead. So heal the land of sin, oh God, of hatred, of violence, of racism, of sexism, of injustice. Heal the land, Jesus. And cause the church to be the light of the world and the salt of the earth. God, I pray your grace today to be upon everybody. Lord, your strength and your love to cover and keep us now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Everybody give God praise right now. Come on, everybody give God praise. Everybody give God praise because he's worthy. Everybody give God praise. Everybody give God praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. This is my declaration today. Love is the command of my life. Love is the command of my life. Saints, it is not an optional thing that we love. It's a required thing that we love. God is expecting every one of us Hallelujah, that claim to have fellowship with him, that claim to be in the light, to claim that we have been delivered and born again. The Lord expects each of us to love. Hallelujah, to love. It's just, it's just that simple. It's an expectation. God expects each of us to love, and love is the command of my life. It's not a suggestion. It's a command of my life. God bless you today. Thank you so much for being with us. I'm trusting that this biblical meditation and prayer has blessed you and that your day is off to a wonderful start. Look, you can stay connected to Refuge Temple all day today. This prayer service is available on Facebook, Instagram, Instagram, YouTube, and thank God for those that join us by conference call. Keep sharing the number and please keep coming back. You can also stay connected through our podcast, Google Podcast, Apple Podcast, SoundCloud, and Spotify. And all of this is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Our radio broadcast airs every day, Monday through Friday at 11:30 a.m. on GregoryGospel.com. Every day, Monday through Friday at 11:30 a.m. on GregoryGospel.com. You can also stay connected by supporting and giving to this ministry. Your gifts help us to do the things that we need to do. And thank you to everybody that gives and shares with this ministry. But if you want to be a blessing, you can mail a gift to Refuge Temple Church, P.O. Box 3552, Burlington, North Carolina, 27215. That's Refuge Temple, P.O. Box 3552, Burlington, North Carolina, 27215. You can also give online. Our website is www.refugetemple, N is in North, C is in Carolina.com. Refuge Temple NC.com is our website, and you can give on the donate page. If you have the GiveLify app, just do a search for Refuge Temple Burlington. You'll see a picture of the church to make your gift there on GiveLify. Or if you have Cash App, our Cash App is dollar sign the number one refuge. Dollar sign one refuge is our Cash App, and you can make your gift there. And we thank you for your giving, but we thank you most of all for being a part of this prayer and how God is using everybody, 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 because all of us are praying one for another. So please keep coming, keep encouraging others to come, and please keep praying and pray for me, pray for Lady Davis, pray for our children, pray for my dad, pray for my sisters, pray for my in-laws, our nieces, our nephews, our entire family. Just hold us up before the Lord. Keep praying for Refuge Temple, that God will continue to bless us. And let's pray one for another, that the favor of God and the love of God might just accept explode in the body of Christ, that everybody experiences this amazing love of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord strengthen you. The Lord carry you through whatever your tests, whatever your trials. The Lord give you his grace to stand and to live. Until next time, this is Pastor Davis. God bless each of you. Shalom, shalom.